It seems everything is political these days, even compromise. Now, if you haven't been paying attention to this bipartisan border deal that's currently being negotiated on the Hill, here's the story in a nutshell. The border is in crisis. Senators from both parties are actually close to a deal that could offer some solutions. Donald Trump is attempting to blow it up in part because he admits this out loud, by the way, because it will help President Biden during an election year. Now, House Republicans are predictably falling in line with all of this, basically arguing that the deal isn't perfect, and so therefore it's dead on arrival. In fact, some Oklahoma Republicans are said to be looking to censure James Lankford for even taking part in these talks. And joining me now to discuss all of this is former Minnesota senator and host of the Al Franken podcast, Al Franken. So what do you make of this? Donald Trump basically as we like to say, saying the quiet part out loud. He's just telling everybody what the playbook is. Don't pass a border deal so that he can run on an out-of-control border. That's pretty cynical. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty cynical. And you think so? I think you and I maybe are pretty used to the cynical uh, nature of, of Washington. But do you think it could work? Uh, yeah, if people forget that that's what it was about, but we got to keep reminding them that's what it's about. The, the problem with this, I mean, James Lankford is about as conservative as you get on the border. I know James, he's a friend of mine, but he's very, very conservative yeah, on the border. no moderate at yeah, all. not at all. And a compromise was uh, created over months and months and months of negotiation. And this was going to pass. And it was going to pass out of the Senate, and it was going to go to the House. And we didn't know exactly what the House was going to be, but now, now they we will vote against it if it gets there. But this is as cynical as you can get, because it's basically, it's all about Trump. And it's not about what's best for the American people. It's not about what's best for immigrants. It's not about, about anything other than what's works for him and getting elected president. Yeah. I mean, when it comes to President Biden, though, and this border deal, I mean, as we were just saying, Senator James Lankford, one of the negotiators here, he is very conservative. This is a pretty hard line border proposal. Are we, there, we don't are know there, exactly what's in it. But some of, what, some of the things that they're talking about uh, involve giving the president the ability to basically shut the border down if a, a, cer a certain number of people cross uh, at a particular time period. Are there risks here from a Democratic perspective that this could inflame tr the President Biden's base? I, I, the, it seems like the Democratic, the Democrats have no control over this whatsoever because all the Republicans who negotiated this in good faith, many of them are dropping out of this deal. So this is not really on the Democrats at all. It's completely on Republicans and on Trump, as far as I can tell. Is it a political uh, problem for President Biden if he cannot get a border deal across the finish line before his reelection is underway? Well, that's what Trump is hoping. On the other hand, there can be a backlash to this, which is if if you and others in, in the media are saying this is exactly what happened, and people will know that, oh my gosh, this guy is out for himself and that's it. That's who this guy is. This is just who Donald Trump is. So this and, and remember that part of this was about Ukraine, funding for Ukraine. That and, was the and, other... And Israel, by the way. Yeah. yeah, this is the other piece of that, though. And uh, so what you're going to have fall apart is funding for Ukraine and Israel. And uh, but this is uh, again falls to Trump. Yeah. The thing about this border situation is that it's really a rallying cry for conservatives. When we looked at voters in Iowa and New Hampshire, it's the top issue, basically, for Republicans right now. And at the same time, you're hearing a lot of Republicans also talking about civil war and saying that this issue could provoke one. Even a Putin ally recently said the same thing, that, that the view from Russia is that this border issue could provoke a civil war. When you see Republicans saying that, and then also suggesting that the state of Texas, for example, should 
ignore the Supreme Court's ruling. Okay, well, this is about the razor wire yeah. along the border that the Supreme Court voted. But do you think that if say they say that they had to take down the razor wire? But if they if they believe that now it's okay to just ignore the Supreme Court? Well, it isn't, is it? What happens next? Well, then the Supreme uh, then the federal government comes in and says, "We're sorry, Texas." but federal borders are enforced by the federal government, not state governments, and we're taking down your razor wire. And if, if God forbid, someone shoots at one of us, we're going to respond. I mean, this, this, we, we have a form of government, right? And the federal government controls federal borders, and as clear-cut as that. And this is a very conservative Supreme Court but the Supreme Court made this ruling yeah. to take down this razor wire. November looks likely to be a Biden-Trump matchup. How do you I think, would say so. How do you think that goes if, let's say, the election were held today? Oh, well, by polling today, this changes all the time, but I, I, I don't know. It's going to be a close election either way, is what I, I say. I... I uh, would like to see people like James Mattis and uh, 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 John Kelly. I, I want to read, can I read a couple things? This is John Kelly on, uh, on uh, President Trump. The depths of his dishonesty, and Kelly was his chief of staff. Mm -hmm. The depths of his dishonesty is just astounding to me. He is the most flawed person I've ever met in my life, <laughs> okay? This is James Mattis, who was a sec def. He is more dangerous than anyone I could ever imagine. I, I would like to see those former Trump administration officials start to say who this guy is. Do you expect that that will happen? I mean, they haven't. They seem to make one they, statement. They, they, and they that, put out these statements, but they don't come out forcefully the way that you're describing. I know. <laughs> That's a shame, isn't it? But I, I would urge them to do it. I hope they're, they're watching right now. Because if they're patriots and they feel this way about this guy, that he's the most dangerous person they've ever seen, that he's the lowest character of anyone they've ever met, it's the, your patriotic duty to get out there and, and tell people about this. We can't have this this man running our, our government. Some of the toughest critics of Donald Trump are the ones who work for him. Al Franken, thank you very much for mm -hmm. joining us.